dad comes and picks me up at the jail. And my dad didn't smoke, but he had a pack of cigarettes, and he chain-smoked those from the L.A. County Jail all the way home. You know, I mean, one after another, one after another. And he says to me, you're a sick boy. And I said, yeah. And um, he sent me to a psychiatrist. <laughs> and there I am with the psychiatrist, you know, and, and just he'd ask me questions, and I would just kind of mess with him. I mean, I wasn't going to talk to this guy. I didn't know him from Adam. Why would I tell you my deepest, darkest secrets and all? And so I wouldn't. And I started going to him for a while. And then that's when I finally said, something's got to change because I'm going crazy here. That's how I got saved. That's why I was open to the gospel when a friend of mine named Bill came and shared with me and said, you know what, you got to get right with God. That's what was going on. And I discovered that trying to be good, because the law, you know, it says God is pleased with this and God is not pleased with that. Well, I thought if I could do the right thing, if I could keep the Ten Commandments, then maybe my life will change. And, and, and one by one, I pretty much was breaking them all till I got to the point where I was just holding on to one. I hadn't killed anybody yet. And uh, at that point, that's when, that's when the law became a schoolmaster to me because I can still remember crying out, and literally crying out to God, you know, in my parents' home, when I'd be by myself there going through my crazy darkness and all, and, and I can remember crying out to God saying, you've got to do something to help me. You've got to do something. I can't take this anymore. I still remember praying like that, sometimes with tears. You can't, God, I cannot take this anymore. I cannot take this anymore. I'm ruining my life. I'm ruining my family. I've, nobody that I know cares for me anymore because I've pushed everybody away. I remember doing that at the age of 19, 20 years of age. The law awakened in me just the reality of my condemned estate. It did not awaken in me an ability to be right with God. And that's part of what it does. It awakens you to realize that you cannot save yourself. Again, in Galatians 3.24, it says, The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. It was what led us to Jesus, who is the one who saves us. And so you have, you have options. You can try and, and keep the law, he's saying, but you stand before God in your own righteousness, or you can receive the grace of God revealed through Jesus Christ and be saved on that basis. But it's one way or the other, and you need to make a choice. Notice how he says in verse 21, um, and so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Even Moses himself could not stand before God at Sinai fearless. And it's a picture of every sinner, every sinner standing at the foot of Sinai, trembling before the holiness of God. But he goes on in verse 22 and he says, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. And so he begins to speak concerning this mountain. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, so the mountain of the new covenant is called Mount Zion. And what that does is it represents heavenly Jerusalem. It's a picture of God's grace.